All right, guys, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Um, we're gonna go through the third installment of this uh, coyote handling series. Uh, we're gonna wash this coyote that I just got done skinning. Um, I'm gonna show you how I do it. People have wash machines and all that stuff that can do it. I don't have that. I don't have the space to do that um, or an old wash machine that I wanna you know, not do any laundry in. Uh, because once you do fur in it, it's pretty much a fur only type of wash machine. So I'm going to go through a little bit what I do here and uh, it's pretty quick and easy first or quick process. So all, all I use is I use a five gallon bucket. I have a freeze proof spigot right here, so I'm not worried about it. I got a set of gauntlet gloves of some sort. Uh, I do have several different varieties, but these work good for doing this. I have the ones with like a strap between them that kind of go over your shoulders. I like them when I'm beaver trapping, but these work good for doing this. And then again, I have my coyote that I uh, just got done skinning right here. So we're gonna get set up. I'm gonna put you on my head, um, put you on my head so you can hopefully kind of see what my hands are doing. If I get water on the lens, I apologize, but you kind of get the idea of what's going on. I'll try to check it just to make sure in here that it doesn't end up getting too much on there. But we're going to get going here because I'm running out of daylight. So we're going to set you guys up on my head here and we'll kind of show you what we're doing. All right, we're going to slip my gauntlet gloves on. They typically don't go over a Carhartt jacket very good. Just do the best I can. First one's on. All right, gloves are on. I run just a little bit of water in here. We're gonna kind of clean my pail out a little ahead of time here. We're just gonna throw that out in the yard here. And now we're gonna Throw my coyote in there so he's fur out, the whole thing's fur out, uh, the front legs here. Typically I try to get the front legs out too. Okay, there's that one. So I just stick my finger in the front leg and then pull it out. Usually you can kind of catch it with your finger and pull the leg out. All right, we're gonna throw him in dry, kind of push him in there. And then turn the water and let the water run on top of the coyote. You can kind of see that he's trying to float up in there. The fur gets so much air in it that they want to float. So if you fill your pail water full first and then throw your coyote in there, your pail is most likely going to overfill. And I try to get a good pail full here. I'm going to shut him off. And then what I do, again, this all slopes away from my house here. We're gonna get out here a ways. I'm just gonna set this down. So all I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna kinda just grab him and push him down back and forth. One hand, then the other. And that water's turning blood red right now because he was fairly bloody when I skinned him. So all I'm basically doing is like a pre-soak in your wash machine right now. Um, this coyote wasn't terribly dirty. Like I do badgers, fox, coyotes, anything that's sold fur out, raccoons if they're super muddy, I do this as well. So this coyote is skinned but not fleshed. I want to wash him and dry him before he's fleshed. Because if you do it after he's fleshed, your skin is going to dry. You know, like you would have him on a stretcher, but he will dry while this coyote is, the fur on the coyote is drying. So I want to leave that uh, fat and the membrane and stuff on him until the fur is dry. All right, so I'm about done here. When I see that his head kind of comes back to the top, there it is. So I'm looking for the ears. So what I'm going to do is literally just kind of hold it with one hand kind of dip him in the water and I'm literally just going to kind of scrub him and I'm just slowly pulling up with my other hand here so you're somewhat squeegeeing the water out but you're also kind of scrubbing him and getting the you know any dirt and that type of stuff kind of scrubbed off of him especially if you get like badgers that are real dirty you want you almost have to like scrub them 
and then dip them back in and then scrub them all the way down. So I'm just alternating hands, doing one side of him and then the other. Okay, I'm basically to the tail, so we're gonna wring the tail out. So you can see how that water is bloody, but it's also dirty. And this coyote did not really look all that dirty. But, so we're gonna dump that water out. And while that pail is draining, I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna hold him by the head, and I'm literally gonna just whip him back and forth. And I'm jerking him down, so I'm literally going down with him. And I'm trying to kind of shake out as much of that water as I can. Get him as clean as I can. Once we get pretty much off the bottom, we'll switch him around, grab him up by the butt, and do the head end. So again, I apologize if I got water on the screen. I'll wipe it off in a second here. So I'm literally just kind of snapping him down, just trying to shake out all that dirty water, or as much of it as I possibly can here, okay? And my process is I do that twice. So we scrub as much of the mud, do like a pre-soak on him, scrub him off, shake him out as best I can, and we'll fill him up with water again. Let me sh I did get a little bit of water on you guys here. All right, so guys, got you guys wiped back off here. Again, you can kind of see how the coyote is floating up in there because I just shook all the water off of him, the tail especially. So I just kind of push him down, make sure I get a good pail full. Okay. And like I said, I just walk out in the middle of my yard just so the water isn't right next to my house. Especially like right now, it's only 20 degrees outside right now so I don't want all the ice by my house so I'm again I'm gonna just do the same thing just kind of agitate him around in here so a coyote typically doesn't have a lot on him the second time a badger though that water will be just black the first time sometimes you actually I do a badger three times like this so I'll do the same process three times with them Coyotes and fox and that type of stuff typically aren't too bad. Raccoons, if they're like super, super muddy, you have to do it more than once or, you know, more than twice. All right, so I got back around to the head here. Again, we're going to just kind of, you know, I'm squeezing him and then kind of just squeegeeing down with it with my hand kind of at water level or just above. So I'm just trying to like squeegee off some of that dirty water as much as I can. So I don't have so much to whip off of him. Okay, you can kind of see, I mean, that water's not clean, but like I said, that's about as much as I typically will get off of him. Squeegee the tail out. Okay, so again, that water, I don't know, hopefully you could see, it's less bloody the second time and it's more dirty the second time. Okay. And then again, I'll just grab him up here by the head. Usually I grab like just in front of the ears and then I can kind of pinch it nice and tight. The first few whips, you get a lot of water off so you don't have to go too hard. And the second time I do this, I, I will whip them as hard as I can and I'll go probably twice as long as I did the first time. So I'm trying to get absolutely every last little drop of water off of him I can by whipping him out here. And then it takes that much less time in the house to get him to dry, the fur to dry. So the more I can get off out here, and the drier he is when I take him into the house, the less time it takes for him to dry. Okay, so he looks pretty good. I mean, obviously he looks like he's still wet here, but that's about as much as I'm gonna get off of him. Now I'm going to take you in and show you what I do with them here. And then what I do with them, I just have some nails up here in my four joists and I'll just hang him up by the nose 
on one of them nails and then I kind of open him up because he's got water on the inside of him as well, right? So I kind of open him up. I have this nice dish pan, so since I'm only doing one, I'll hang him over that dish pan or wash tub or whatever you want to call it. Otherwise, that's what these five gallon pails are for too. So if I have multiple coyotes that I wash, I hang them all up at once. Uh, he's just starting to drip a little bit. The longer he hangs here, you know, like the end of these hairs are all wet. He'll just slowly drip down. Uh, he'll hang here, I don't know, six, eight hours most of the time without a fan blowing on him before I'll even consider fleshing him. I want that fur to be as dry as I can before I flesh him. The vent for my furnace is also right here. I have it like three quarters of the way blocked off so I don't get a ton of air this way, but I get a little bit of air. If you fleshed them ahead of time, you see how like this part of the skin is sticking out? All that would dry if you fleshed them ahead of time. And it would actually, you know, you wouldn't even be able to get them on your stretcher sometimes because that's already, this part of it would be dry, the rest of it wouldn't. So again, he's already dripping in the bottom. I do have a little fan right here. Once in a while, if it don't seem like after like three, four hours, if it don't seem like they're drying real good, you know, when I have two, three of them, I'll stick that guy like maybe 10 feet away and I'll turn it on the lowest setting it has and kind of just slowly let it blow a little air over them just to get them dried off a little bit quicker on the outside because it will, eventually it will like dry up the nose in the mouth of your coyote. So just by having, a, you know, if they're hanging here too long, so by having the fan blowing on it, it kind of helps the fur dry a little bit quicker. And that way, like the nose and stuff doesn't get so dried out before I flush them. All right, guys, that's it. So like I said, I typically I'll wash badgers every time because they're always muddy. I will wash coyotes almost all the time, even if they don't get too bloody when I'm skinning them. I will wash them almost all the time because it cleans that fur gets any even if they don't look dirty when they're in a trap they're rolling around in the dirt you'd be surprised how much whiter and brighter this coyote will look even though he really didn't look dirty you know even his belly will look quite a bit whiter after you uh run them through the wash than they would have had you not done it uh, especially when coyotes are worth the most this pays off even if it's you know it might give me one grade lighter in color well, that could be like a $10 difference in coyotes because I have more of a tan colored coyote. You know, you kind of see like what my coyotes look like. So this guy I didn't wash, but you know, if I would have, he might have been a little bit brighter and he might have been, you know, graded a little bit whiter color, which are typically worth more. So, all right, I think that's all I got for you today. Like I said, we're going to let this guy drip dry for probably six or eight hours until, like I said, the fur is mostly dry, and then we'll get to fleshing him. And that will be the next video in this series. It'll be fleshing a coyote. I don't know if it'll necessarily be this one. I may flesh another one I have, but we're going to flesh a coyote. Next, uh, there'll be a fleshing video, there'll be a boarding video, and then kind of a final prep for a sale video. So stay tuned for those. Those will be coming up as the next few videos here in line. I appreciate you guys watching Schmatz Outdoors. If you have any questions as to what I was doing or have suggestions for me, um, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I'm more than, I like to hear you guys' comments. If it helps me or if you think it might help me, it probably will help other people. And that's what we're all about here, trying to just share our knowledge a little bit, help everybody out. Uh, again, if you have a wash machine and all that, that's cool, but I don't need you putting that in the comments that, hey, just get a wash machine. I don't have space to put one. This works simple enough for what I'm doing. Um, yeah, anyway, end of my rant there. Appreciate you guys watching Schmatz Outdoors. We'll see you on the next one.